60s and the 70s, uh, Latin America uh, terrorists and guerrilla groups have been a best example for European terrorists in Germany, in Italy, in Spain. Uh, so I hope that uh, what happens still today in Latin America will not influence the European arena, but we never know because people at uh, that time did not understand that uh, uh, Latin American uh, formula does not fit to Europe, but they could still uh, adopt it for a certain period of time. We have 20 minutes because uh, uh, we were asked to fi finish at 4.45. I'd like still to speak very shortly about Jewish terrorism. Uh, because this was one of the subjects on the... I won't speak about the uh, more uh, uh, serious terrorist activity, Jewish terrorist activity between 79 and 84, which uh, was uh, uh, called the... Sorry, was called the uh, Jewish underground and which was the most uh, serious uh, terrorist activity since the formation of the State of Israel. But the last years, we see also an, an increase of uh, activity of uh, small terrorist cells, especially in the West Bank or what is called uh, Samaria and Judea. The Israeli Security Service, Shabak, publishes monthly reports about Palestinian terrorist activities against Israel. But strangely, they published only two annual reports, one for 2000. 2014 and one for 2015. In the two reports, there is also a, a, a description of the Jewish terrorism. So according to the Shabak, the number of terrorist attacks and nationalist crimes went down in 2014, but they, uh, their severity increased. A rise in violence was registered after the massacre of uh, the synagogue and several vehicle assaults in Jerusalem in November 2014. So this is kind of revenge attacks by Jewish terrorists. 16 terrorist attacks were executed by fire-right activists in 2014, as opposed to 25 in 2013. The most severe incident in 2014 was the kidnapping and murder of the teenager Mohammed Abu Khleir uh, by a terrorist cell. The cell consisted of three Jewish members with no prior nationalist background, by the way, two of them were minors, who acted as revenge to the abduction and murder of three Israeli teens on 12th of June 2014. And these two attacks, or these two terrorist uh, events, uh, produced finally the protective edge operation in Gaza in uh, July, August 2014. Uh, in 2015, 16 terrorist attacks were carried out by Jewish attackers, the same number of attacks as in the previous year. However, the severity of the attacks increased in well, as well as the number of casualties. The most prominent attack was the arson of the Dawaish family's home in the Palestinian town of Duma in July, and the attack killed three members of the family. Uh, According to the Aretz, by the way, the, uh, which uh, uh, published a report, the Israeli Jewish terror incidents targeting Palestinians tripled in 2018. 482 politically motivated crimes by Jews reported in the West Bank, including assault, property damage, compared to 140 in 2017. Um, most of these attacks are, by the way, beating up and throwing stones at Palestinians. More frequently, the offenses consisted of painting nationalist and anti-Arab or anti-Muslim slogans. Such incidents decreased sharply in 2016 and 2017 because the Shabak and the police were much active in the West Bank against the right wing because of the killing in the village of Duma in 2014. Defense officials said that the most extreme group of right wing activists, the so-called Hilltop Youth, uh, which live in the West Bank outpost are estimated to number about 300. Uh, out of this, a few dozens are suspected of involvement in violence. Most of the suspects are quite young, 15 to 16 years old. And most of the violent acts were allegedly committed in the arena, a area of outpost in the Shiloh, uh, Shiloh Valley area between Ramallah and uh, uh, Nablus. Uh, there is a uh, at ethnological and sociological analysis of the Hilltop uh, uh, youth, but I don't have time here to enter it. What is uh, clear, they don't come only from the families of the settlers which live there. They come from uh, many cities uh, in Israel, and they are kind of uh, uh, young people which are uh, living outside of their families, and they find some kind of uh, ideology which is not uh, really a religious or a settler ideology, but they become 
uh, radicalized in this uh, environment and uh, produce this kind of attacks, uh, as I said. Um, um, but what's interesting is that uh, in the uh, investigation of the Duma uh, arson, uh, there is a disproportionate presence of American among settlers overall. But among the radicals, there is also, uh, especially among the leadership, uh, the American settlers have a, a special role uh, because of the uh, ideological presence of Kane and his uh, supporters. Uh, he was a native uh, New Yorker, and Baruch Goldstein, which was from Brooklyn, and as a physician in 1994, he was responsible for the murder of uh, 29 Muslims prayers, uh, praying people in the cave of the patriarchs. In 2013, the Israeli government initiated an outreach program known as the Hebrew Shepherd to rein in the hilt of youth, but according to the evaluations, uh, this uh, program did not succeed very much. I would like to show you only uh, the, uh, this kind of uh, uh, diagram between 1995 and 2015 to see what was the number of uh, 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 fatalities by Jewish terrorism. You see here, 2001, 2002, this is the beginning of the first intif second intifada where hundreds of Israelis were killed in suicide bombings. And you have 2005, 2005 which is the, practically the end of the second intifada. And then you see the 2014 and 15 is the beginning of a new uh, wave, which uh, uh, the maximum for the moment we had three uh, fatalities. When you compare with the diagrams of uh, Palestinian terrorism, where you have uh, dozens and hundreds of people, clearly it is, a, uh, it is a, a threat, but it is a threat because it is producing radicalization on the Palestinian side, and especially when we speak about Jerusalem and the attempts in the past, but perhaps even today, to attack the uh, 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 at Laksa, the uh, mosque and the Dome Mosque, this is really a strategic threat, and the uh, Israeli authorities are very uh, worried about uh, uh, this possibility of an attack by the right wing radicals in Israel or on the uh, Mount Temple. Now, I think that we have 10 minutes for questions, so please. Yes, uh, we have a. Can you give this? Hello, yeah. Uh, this question is uh, concerning Western Europe mainly. Um, right wing did not commit any terrorist attack against us, the Jews. And uh, my question is, does anyone know why they did not attack us yet? Why I'm asking? Because it might give us in information some knowledge uh, about the challenge that we are facing in the near future. Yeah. Um, thank you for the question. Uh, first, uh, they didn't attack, uh, and I hope they won't, but uh, they are planning to do so. And in many cases, uh, uh, for example, a few years ago, a French national was stopped in the Ukrainian Polish border with uh, lots of weapons and, uh, and explosives. And uh, in his investigation, he told uh, the investigators that uh, he wanted to execute terrorist attacks uh, both against mosques and synagogues. So Jewish targets in Europe are still a primary uh, target for uh, neo-Nazis. We need to understand neo-Nazis portray the Jews as the responsible for everything bad, including the immigration of the Muslim immigration to Europe. So it's like uh, Robert Bowers in uh, the United States. Uh, I think that uh, the Jewish communities in Europe uh, should be in, uh, in alert. Uh, I don't have the numbers now, but uh, I think the uh, uh, number of uh, anti-Semitic incidents uh, and their severity has uh, grown uh, last uh, two, three years. Uh, and although uh, most of the incidents are a result of uh, Muslim uh, radicals or Muslim youth, uh, we have also an increase of right-wing uh, 
uh, attacks, uh, especially I think in Germany, in France, and uh, in my opinion, uh, there is a possibility that in the near future something more serious could uh, happen, like in the past. But I, historically, I want to, to, to stress one thing, that uh, uh, besides, uh, I think, in Germany, where there were several assassination attempts, not uh, really terrorist attacks, uh, some of the groups, especially those which uh, uh, were active in Italy, and in Italy they were much more organized, a uh, uh, larger number of, uh, of people, and a clear strategy. In Italy, never, never the right-wing uh, groups attack, attacked uh, uh, Jews, uh, and not Israel, by the way, although some of them were uh, in contact with Palestinians and even with Iran. So this is connected, perhaps, with the history of uh, the Italian uh, 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 people and Italian state, for instance, it is known that uh, during the Second World War, although the Germans compelled the fascist regime to uh, uh, introduce uh, anti-Jewish uh, uh, racist uh, laws, in uh, Savoia, occupied by the, uh, in Tunisia, and in uh, the Dalmatia, I think, which were occupied by the Italian army, no Jew, uh, Jew were taken to the camps, okay? The, where the Italian army was uh, occupying, they did not take Jews to the camp. This is very interesting, and I think, it, as I said, it's connected with the mentality and the history of the Italian people. Uh, if I could just add one, yeah. one comment. The attacks have generally been things like immigration uh, targeting Muslims right now. Okay, so the assassination uh, by Darren Osborne, the Finsbury Park mosque attack. It would be, it'd be interesting to see if the far right shifts its focus towards anti-Semitic attacks w once we see or if we see a resolution of some of the immigration debate. I mean, many countries are not letting in as many immigrants from Syria or Afghanistan. And if that issue starts to get settled, we may see them look towards other issues. Can I just add one small thing onto yes, that? Please. One thing that we see um, in the online oh, forums is, um, and this is a quote, Muslims first, Jews later. So it's like the near enemy, far enemy in Salafist thought, so they'll, they'll, <laughs> they'll get there. Uh, by the way, uh, the, uh, manifesto, the manifesto of Tarrant uh, almost does not have anti-Jewish uh, uh, slogans. And interestingly, what he says, what is the, the best state that he is supporting? China. Very strange, uh, you see. Yeah. Yes, please. Uh, um, my question is for Dr. Jones. Uh, if we, in the US, if we identify, if we identify uh, right uh, extremists, how come there's no, as far as I'm concerned, no programs like we saw from Belgium to de-radicalize or to um, combat that? I mean, I think there's the, the answer to that question is at this point, there's not a lot of violent extremism programs at all. So it's not just on this issue, it's the Department of Homeland Security under George Salim, this is the Combating Violent Extremism pro Program, that office was folded. And I mean, there, there is, DHS has something along those lines, but there has been a major decrease in targeting violent extremism writ large. There's obviously a debate now on this issue, but, <coughs> but I think the U.S. has done a, a terrible job of highlighting and countering extremism uh, in, in general, including devoting federal, state, and local resources towards um, programs along these lines. But I would just say the problem is bigger. It's, it's true towards any type of extremism. There, there, there just isn't much funding anymore for this. Yes, please. Um, my question is for please. Thank you. Uh, thank you for talking about the situation in Australia. Um, this is a, it's a confluence of a lot of things these days. And uh, uh, to, to, to repeat what Dr. Ariel was saying, everybody is killing everybody. And <laughs> it's a, a journal article I read actually talked about the counter jihad movement or f right movements in, in Australia. You even have uh, a few Asian members. Uh, I, I found that rather unusual, but uh, apparently they are increasing as well because it's a reaction to 
the counter jihad movement or something like that. And uh, I'm just wondering how much of uh, their reach is also coming into Asia, which is where I'm coming from. Thank you. I haven't come across any uh, direct links with Asian countries. Um, are you referring to the paper by Jade Hutchinson? I don't, yeah, okay, yeah. Um, yeah, so, sorry, just getting orientated here. Uh, so uh, there have been uh, cases as well of uh, Asian Australians actually leading the rallies and the marches. Uh, that doesn't register in the manifestos. So in the manifestos, they're still fiercely uh, vitriolic against uh, Asians, um, homosexuals, and you know the, the, the general um, the general target group. Uh, so uh, obviously that doesn't preclude them, and you know all the groups do have their their quirks. But generally speaking, ideologically, um, their in group they self define as being uh, the white Australian. Um, but it is expanding, so we're seeing increased numbers of women involved as well. Um, so, you know, that there's always a chance that, um, that they'll go further. But at the moment, I should point out, the leaders are, you know, white men aged between 20 and 30. Last question. Sorry. Okay. For you, Dr. Okay, I'll talk about. So, for you, Dr. Carmen, I want to ask you those metrics that you showed about the uh, killings of the by the uh, the health of you through the Jewish settlers or Barcelona, you know, the extremists on that side. So, I mean, why are they uh, classified as terror as such? Aren't they extending the the idea of terror here? When what we really see is something like, I mean. They're revenge killings. They're retaliatory. They're not excusable in any way. But do they really come under the same umbrella? They're not motivated by ideology. They're not motivated by political programs. They truly are revenge. No, no, it's uh, political. It's clearly political. Even the revenge is political, OK? And if you kill uh, or you wound uh, innocent people, this is terror. It, 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 it does not, I'm, I'm very sorry. The Israeli government and Israeli authorities consider this terror, and I think, as an expert, that this is terror. By Jews or not Jews, this is when you are killing people for a, a political goal, this is terrorism, okay? Unfortunately. Last question. Uh, you spoke about, a lot about uh, Génération Identitaire in France, and as for now, this uh, movement is not a political party, but it's closely affiliated with um, far right wing political parties, legitimate. And those parties actually fear that uh, Génération Identitaire might be too controversial for them, so they're trying to get rid of it. What would happen when the Génération Identitaire is finally done on the political stage, when it's finally kicked out? Uh, Génération Identitaire is a European movement, not only for French, it is active in Italy, in uh, uh, Germany. Uh, and as I said, for the moment, they are anti-immigration, uh, they are uh, racist, and uh, they are violent in uh, some cases. Uh, but they are perhaps in a trans transitional phase. We don't know if they'll become really terrorists. For the moment, they are not considered to be uh, terrorists. Okay, unfortunately, I have to close. I want to uh, thank uh, Richie Wood for uh, the support for organizing this uh, uh, meeting and uh, all the panelists.